The woodpecker is a very special little bird. The beak of a woodpecker is like industrial strength. It is stronger than other birds' beaks. Uh, he has special feet. Most birds have three toes out the front, one toe out the back. Woodpecker has two toes out the front, two toes out the back. And that's so he can climb around on a tree trunk, a vertical tree trunk, right side up, upside down, sideways. He can crawl any way he wants to. He has uh, special tail feathers. His tail feathers are different than other birds' tail feathers. Uh, they're more resilient. They're, they're spongy and they're very strong and tough because he tripods himself with his two feet and his tail feathers so that he grabs a hold of that tree, fans out his tail feathers, and then bangs his head into the tree. Now you would think that a woodpecker would go home every night and say to Mrs. Woodpecker, oh, I got this headache, I was banging my head on a tree all day. But he doesn't, why? Well, because God made him with special equipment. For instance, between his beak and his skull, there's a piece of cartilage. It acts as a shock absorber. His skull is, is the thickest bone per body weight of any creature. As a matter of fact, brain surgeons study the brains of woodpeckers, how they're hooked in there and everything to help them with like trauma people in accidents that they need to put their brains back in there. And, uh, and so they study woodpeckers. The woodpecker with his strong skull and his shock absorber and his strong beak and his tail feathers and his feet, he's all ready to go except for one thing. Once he drills his hole, he's got to get that bug out of the tree because that's lunch. All right, well, how's he going to do that? Well, most birds, their tongue goes right to the tip of the beak. A woodpecker's tongue goes as much as 10 inches out of his beak. Now why? Well, because he's going to drill the hole, find the bug tunnel down in the tree, stick his tongue down in the tunnel and drag the bug out. Now you would have to say, could I stick my tongue down a hole in a tree and drag a bug out? Of course not. Well, how does the woodpecker do that? Well, God made the woodpecker with little barbs on the tip of his tongue. And he will literally stab that bug larva down in there because it doesn't want to come out. But in case that's not enough, he has a little glue factory in his tongue that manufactures exactly, precisely the right glue to stick to the bug, but it doesn't stick to his beak. And so he pulls that bug into his mouth. Now we have a problem, if evolution is true. Let's say over hundreds of thousands of years, this woodpecker got all this equipment and then he glues his tongue to a bug and he swallows the bug. What just happened to his tongue? He just swallowed his tongue. You know, he dies, he just strangled himself, okay? But he doesn't, why? Well, because as he brings the bug into his mouth, he has another little factory that manufactures the solvent to dissolve the glue. So he dissolves the glue, loosens up the bug, swallows the bug. God made him that way. Woodpeckers, when they peck, they open their eyes between each peck and they aim their beak, they focus, they aim their beak, they close their eyes, and then they hit the tree. So you hear a woodpecker out there, he's going drrr, drrr. Every time you hear that drrr, in between each peck, he opens his eyes, focuses, aims his beak, hits the tree. Why? Well, they used to think it was just to keep the wood chips out. But now the scientists have measured the, the force of the impact of the woodpecker's head against the tree. And the force is so great that if he did not close his eyes, he would pop his eyeballs out. So I would say, have you ever seen a blind woodpecker? No, they never miss. They never miss, okay? Now, one special woodpecker, the European green woodpecker. I think he's unique in all the animal kingdom. I don't know for sure, but I think he might be. His tongue is different than any other tongue, as far as I know. Our tongue starts in the back of our throat, comes up and out the front. His tongue starts in the back of his throat, goes down the throat, comes out the back of his neck, up over the top of his head, it's under the skin, comes out a little hole between his eyes, goes in one of his nostrils, and then comes out of his beak. And you'd have to say, now how does that evolve? I've asked evolutionists that question. I've said, now you tell me, how and where did that tongue come from? They, they don't have a clue. They can't tell me. I'm saying, well, you're telling me that this bird evolved from some other creature, but there's no other creature that we know of with a tongue like that. How did that happen? They don't have any idea. I think there are very bright people who study science and do a good job of it. But all of a sudden they get to a point where they have to decide, did this thing happen uh, over long periods of time somehow? Or, boy, it sure looks like it could have happened just bang, just like it is. And then if they discover, hey, I have no way of describing this thing in terms of evolutionary science, they're faced with the other option which is maybe a designer and a creator, and they say, I don't want to go that way, okay? So they suppress that evidence. And so many of the things that I studied, we had to search 
just to find information on them because they are not in the textbooks. They just don't put them in because they have no way to explain it. And so they just ignore it. Exploration Films, where curious truths and uncommon minds meet.